guys. Look at my dog out here. And, uh, happy Sunday. I'm actually filming this um, on Sunday, but this is going to be my Smart Money Saturday. Or I guess just whatever vlog just said to you guys because there's a lot that's gone on since we last spoke last week. And I'm going to update you. So, if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, whatever. I swear if I see a doll, y'all, I'm trying to tell you. Like, <laughs> but anyway, if, you, if you've been following me, you know that. My uncle, my mom's brother, passed away um, Monday, <clears throat> and apparently he had been dead in his apartment for about seven days until they noticed that he hadn't come out of his house or his apartment for seven days. So that has been a complete shocker to myself and my family because I mean he had health issues, but he wasn't like like. Like, you know, like, you know how someone's, like, in chronic terminal illness or something? He wasn't, that wasn't his situation, so it was very shocking. And plus, this is the third death in three years. The third death. That's just crazy. Um, my grandmother passed away October 27, 2017. Uh, my grandfather passed away. March 19, 2018, and then now my gr my uncle passed away or was found dead um, September 9, 19, 2019. So three, three deaths in three years. And of course my aunt passed away in 2014 in liver cancer. So it's been a lot, like this week has been crazy. Um, and for, like my mom and I were having some issues because uh, I don't know but I didn't want to go into all that but like all I know is I was trying to save the house and I've decided to not pursue that not to continue on um, I have a good friend and I was, I was talking to him about that and then I was talking to this other, this other good friend I have and he said something to me he was like you know you're holding on to memories i guess the memories that come with the house and i was like yeah and then i think about it i'm the generational curse breaker for my family i, I break the generational curses i'm the one who you know, doesn't live in poverty or first generational college grad and all that like that's me so it's like it's almost like that house being in foreclosure being sold or whatever it's like the end of that cycle and it's not for me to pick it up and save it it's just that's just part of that's just the the journey that's the that's the will of God I, I assume because once I made up my mind to do that and to not say that because honestly it, it's kind of started with some of the family some of the the brothers and sisters threatened to not sit like not sign the paperwork and I'm like if you don't sign the paperwork I can't take over it like you have to sign it over to me and I was in you know I'm like I ain't got time you know I'm literally about to put everything on a line to save this house and for a family that has not been very supportive of me and I'm the one who stepped out to do something with like so you see how I'm saying but that you see what that looks like for me it's like it's crazy so it's like no Stop being so codependent, Shamanda. No more codependent. I'm reading the book Codependent No More. Bestseller. Um, codependency is something that we discuss in recovery and addiction a lot because when you grow up with or you're married to or you're raised by an alcoholic or an addict overall, um, you take on that caregiver role. You take on the enabling role. You take on I'm trying to control you and save you. It's the person that's going to follow their husband to the bar to make sure he don't drink too much or make sure he don't get in the car and drive drunk or whatever. You just become, you try to control it so that you can save them. But at the end of the day, you realize that you can't control nobody but you. You're the only person that you can control. 
And that's so hard to understand and to internalize to someone who has been trying to take care of everybody for all of their life. And especially someone like me, who that's what I do. I take care of people. I help them heal. And once you put that boundary there, like, okay, that's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to help you help yourself. It's a different dynamic. But maybe you can, it's, it's, sometimes it's easy to do that professionally, to set that boundary. But when it comes to family and personal relationships, you don't know how to do it. So I've been reading that book and really diving into that and understanding what that looks like. This is a, oh, I thought this was a road. I was like, what in the world? Um, so it has tremendously blessed me and I, it helped me understand so much about myself. But I realized, like, you're being codependent. You're trying to pick up and save this house because that's what you do. You save people. You come through. You play superhero, superwoman. No more. No more. No more. You know, I let this year I have given people money to save them from evictions. I mean, twice. Neither like literally having to track people down to get my money back, or them like going on vacations and trips and stuff without paying me my money first. And then once I got in a situation where I'm like, you know, I'm in a new state and I wasn't working and my money started to deplete, I'm like, I can't call these same people to get money from them or, or for them to give me my money that you owe me. First off, they're taking vacations or they're partying and hanging out. And then you become resentful and angry, but you created that. It was started with you. It started with me, right? And so, I don't, this week has been so revealing. And I'm grateful. You know, sometimes it takes things to happen in life to really kind of sit you down and you're like, yeah. One positive thing, which really kind of supersedes all of this negative stuff, is. Um, I began my mentorship program. It's a six-month mentorship program, and I'm working with an executive producer. Um, her name is Tressa, and she, I'm so excited. She has produced four films and turn, basically turned books into movies, which is my role. And I'm so excited because now I have someone who can hold me accountable. I'm the person who holds other people accountable. I'm the person that pushes people to pursue their goals and to manifest their full potential and I see their potential in them and they don't see it in themselves I'm that person but I never really understood and realized that I needed that I needed someone to do that for me I'm a very self-motivated person I don't really need anybody pushing me whatever but at the same time to get to certain levels you have to have that once you get to a certain kind of plateau you need someone who can help you and then especially if you're entering a new industry which I am filmmaking production um, TV, media, all that. This is a new industry for me, and so I need someone who's already done it, who's already doing it, and who have mentors that are mentoring them, and they're like pouring into me. It's like passing down. So I'm excited for 2020. Like all this, all this stuff has happened this year, but I know that it has created this new woman that is emerging. I'm not fully there yet, and I think by the end of this year, I'll be where I want to be emotionally and mentally. Because I'm unlearning so much stuff. I literally just posted, I mean, just published a book about my traumas and everything that I experienced. So I knew I was going to have to go through a, a, a change and a process, having released that to the universe and the world. Um, I just didn't know it was going to be like this. I guess I didn't know what to expect, honestly. But now I do, and I'm working on it and, and, and unlearning a lot of stuff and healing. I When I tell you, my mom and I hugged for the first time in like forever. I don't remember the last time I actually genuinely hugged my mom. And it really wasn't until uh, I started working with these ladies that I work with um, as far as counseling, my counseling clients. I, I do um, counseling for women and addiction and pregnant women. But a lot of them were saying how, you know, they didn't have a good relationship with their mom and that they missed their mom and they wish they had that relationship. And as I'm hearing them say that, I'm thinking, like, wow, like, I had to finally acknowledge that I want a relationship with my mom, too. <laughs> you know, we were living in the same house and not saying nothing to each other like that. Like, and I'm like, what are my children seeing? 
I mean, I would say things like, you know, I want y'all to have a better relationship with me than I help my mom. I want them, because they're not crazy. They're old enough to understand and see what's going on. But I'm like, why can't, why can't I show them what this looks like? And it always starts with me, even though sometimes I feel, I wish people would take the initiative to, to just take the initiative and me not have to be the first person. But sometimes that's just what it is you know i'm the person who understands it so i have to initiate it but i'm gonna do what i can do and uh and see where this goes but i would love to have a healthy relationship with my mom i really would um so hopefully so pray for me about that like i said first time we hugged in like i don't know how long and the way she hugged me was like i missed you and i do need you in my life I'm her only daughter, her oldest child, first baby, you know, but I can't, I'm not going to allow myself to be in a space where people take, take, take from me anymore. I'm done. I deserve love and to be protected and nurtured and pr protected, provided for, maintained. Like I deserve all of that that I didn't get. I never got it. Here I am 30, almost 31 and I never got any of that. And I think it wasn't until I finally acknowledged that I even wanted that and I needed it that now it's sitting on me because before I could run from it and just deny it but now like no you do you do not just from your family but your from your husband your spouse like you deserve all of that and more you deserve a person who's gonna put you first who's gonna make you a priority at least not put me first before themselves but make me a priority a man <laughs> you know a man a real man and um i think it starts with me i know it starts with me because i have to you have to show people how to treat you like if you ain't taking care of yourself or you let people take advantage of you and treat you in kind of way or whatever or um manipulate you and all this stuff then people think that's normal and that's okay and you're setting the standard so like i said the, end of the rest of this year that's what i'm focused on is building myself up because career-wise Listen, I don't even like I'm, I can't even Im imagine exactly what's to come and where I'm gonna be. All I know is I see red carpets, I see y'all with me, with I see myself with a lot of y'all favorite celebrities. Um, I'm speaking Oprah and Tyler Perry into existence. I mean, literally working with them. Um, my first movie, I see lines lined up at the movie theaters to see something that I produced and created. I see healing, I see people talking about mental health and addictions openly and no longer feeling taboo. I see all kind of TV appearances. There's so much I see and I've been having dreams y'all and it's so crazy. So I'm excited, I'm excited and nervous because it's big and it's scary and it's new. But I know this is what God wants, but I know the rest of this month, this year, I'm focused on the mentorship program, learning all I can about film and media and TV and, and finishing my movie scripts but also taking care of me and put myself first. And that's what my mentor said yesterday. One of the, one of the tips she gave us was like, put yourself first. And it's so funny because we hear stuff like that all the time. And I probably tell my clients this all the time, right? But sometimes we say stuff to the point where we don't really stop and think about what does this really mean? What does it mean to put yourself first? To me, it means cutting off and, and ending toxic relationships no more no more especially if i didn't give you time <laughs> you know like no no more i'm putting myself first and i'm gonna it's gonna open the door for people and the right people to love me nurture me protect me and value me with action not with words but just who they are and how they treat me and the more people do that with me they know this is just in my nature. I'm going to give back to you. So we're pouring into each other. And it's like, it's it's reciprocal. It's mutual. Yeah. So I'm keeping my cup full and overflowing, as Oprah says. That's where I'm at. So that's the vlog for this week, y'all. I didn't do the vlog for Wednesday, Friday, or Saturday. But hopefully, tomorrow my goal is um which is supposed to be my uncle's funeral but apparently they don't even have all that arranged and complete yet so i don't even know but i want to definitely start um next week i want to do all my vlogs on time 
stay on schedule. That's one of my goals. I want my mentor to hold me accountable for it. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, so tomorrow I'll probably talk about codependency and really dive into the definition of that and what it looks like for Mental Health Monday. Uh, Wednesday I'll be out of town for um, training for my job. So you guys will get to see me in the hotel room. I can vlog about everything that's happened up to this point. Give y'all some, some uh, advice as far as like career and um, things like that, things I've experienced. And then Friday, I'll update you on finance stuff. And Saturday, as far as I'm back on the Dave Ramsey plan, so I'll definitely update you on that as well. So, hopefully I will be, I'm going to stay. I'm going to vlog all week, y'all. I'm going to vlog all week. I need y'all to really, like, binge watch my videos so I can get my views back up. I don't understand YouTube at all, but it is what it is. I just want to definitely monetize my channel. It's, like, so close. I got all the subscribers I need, minimum, but I need the views, so help me out with that all right guys i think that's it for today um leave me a comment below what do you think about things i share can you relate what can you relate to um i appreciate the prayers for my myself and my family during this time for my uncle he was a minister and i think he's one of my biggest cheerleaders especially i started up my book and published it and because he had just gotten on social media so he didn't I don't think he really understood the stuff that I was doing until he like saw it like saw me posting magazine articles and the cover of my book and I think that's when it really hit him and he was a dreamer you know he was a dreamer he always talked about he wanted a big house and Hollywood and it was just so many things that he wanted and he never got it because he it started getting sick and then all it came into wanting disability like making sure he got his disability and which I get it because he had worked so many years at like a factory type job and I think it like did wear and tear on his on his body but somehow he kind of got into that dependency mode where it was like I want I just want to get this check I'm gonna get a proof of this check and when I get a proof of this check I'm gonna get me a car and a house and so like hearing stuff like that my life over my lifetime I just was like I don't want to be that person if you read my book, you know what I'm saying. This is, he was a prime example of one of the male child children of my grandparents and how that dependency stuff stuck in and how I saw that and I was like, I don't want to go that route. So, you know, but unfortunately he didn't get to fulfill that. But I know that by God's grace and mercy, I get to fulfill the dreams and prayers of my my grandmother, my grandfather, my aunt, and my uncle. So, it's just more motivation to push forward. When I walk into my beautiful estate one day, I can say, you know, my uncle didn't have this. He didn't get to experience this, but I did. Somebody with our last name did. So, that makes it more motivating. And I can make this happen. I can do this. I can. Alright guys, so I will see you tomorrow. Make sure you leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. How you feeling? Um, I do apologize. But now you know. <laughs> Alright, I'll see you later.